the Pentagon is a larger polluter than 140 countries combined. How can we seriously talk about net zero? House Speaker Nancy Pelosi faced one of the toughest and most relevant questions that she has likely ever been asked. This at the UN Climate Change Conference where Abby Martin of the Empire Files raised the issue of the military's impact on the climate crisis. Check this out. Wait a minute, wait, I want a woman, I want a woman, a woman, a woman. <laughs> Gender equality here. Uh, Maybe I don't, let's see. <laughs> Abby Martin with the Empire Files. Speaker Pelosi, you just presided over a, a large increase in the Pentagon budget. This Pentagon budget is already massive. The Pentagon is a larger polluter than 140 countries combined. How can we seriously talk about net zero? If there is this bipartisan consensus to constantly expand this large contributor to climate change, which is exempt from these conferences. Military is exempt from climate talks. Well, I, I just want to use an example, if I can. Um, you know the sea level rise is an important part of, uh, you know, what's happening to the climate. And I am not a defense person, but I've had so many talks with the Defense Department, with the Navy in particular, about how they have to respond to what's going on. So I really do think that there is no reason why what we're putting together, you know, uh, with Build Back Better and other things can't respond to the Defense Department and, and, and have the same impact in terms of reducing emissions. And I do think that the Defense Department is very much aware of the fact that they have to play a major role both from a strategic as well as, you know, for the good of the world. So I don't see what we're doing in any way or, you know, increasing the defense budget as being something that's inconsistent with climate action. I really don't. And may I just add that um, the national security advisors all tell us that the climate crisis is a national security matter. Uh, it is, of course, a health matter for our children, the water they drink, the air they breathe, etc. It is a jobs issue between clean, good, clean technologies uh, being the future of our workforce and the training for all of that. It is a national security issue because of the, uh, uh, all of the con conditions that climate crisis produces. I won't go into all of them, but they do ca are cause for migration, conflict over habitat and resources, and again, uh, a security challenge globally. And then the fourth, of course, the moral issue that we need to pass on this planet to future generations in a responsible way. Now, recognizing what you said, we recognize that as well. And a big user of, of uh, fuel, uh, there have been many initiatives over time more successful with more technology to convert from fossil fuel uh, to other fuel other sources of, uh, of fuel of, to run the military because it would make the biggest difference. Transportation, defense, these are two of the biggest, uh, it can make the biggest difference in all of that. And that is something we're very, very focused on. As I say, the Defense Department sees this systemically, that we have to stop it as a national security issue. And one way to do that is to stop our dependence on fossil fuels, which exacerbate the climate crisis. With that, I thank you all for being here. Unfortunately, they're telling us they have to clean the room. I didn't know about that. Oh, they have to clean the room. They have to clean the room. I'm not surprised. After the amount of shit that came out of your mouth, I'm sure they have to clean the room. You will never see a member of the Washington press ask a question that tough or that relevant. Amazing work here from Abby Martin and the Empire Files. She has to go to, I mean, Empire Files have to go to freaking Scotland to be able to get the press credentials needed to ask a U.S. lawmaker questions. U.S. journalists have to go to Scotland to ask a U.S. lawmaker a question. How ridiculous is that? Because they don't want people like Ivan Martin in the room. They don't want these relevant questions that actually matter to people and that are tough, and they have no good answer for this. So we'll get to the, their responses in a second here. But first, I want to mention just how, how funny it was that Nancy Pelosi intentionally picks a woman i want a woman and then you see her maybe kind of regret it when she says maybe i don't i'm not sure if she recognized ivan martin in the, in the empire files but uh <laughs> clearly there abby asking one of the toughest questions that i think pelosi's ever been asked and you saw they have no real answer for that i mean they completely avoided the 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 point 
uh, about how the U.S. military is exempt from these climate talks. They didn't even mention that. Like, if they actually were serious about reducing carbon emissions from the military, then you would involve them in the talks. They would be a part of that discussion. But there's a reason they are exempt from those talks. Now, first, I want to go to uh, Frank Pallone here. So he says, and it, <laughs> this is such a ridiculous quote. He says an increased defense budget is not inconsistent with reducing emissions. Really. Despite all the data. H how can you possibly say that? It's just, I think that's going to be one of those one of those quotes where, you know, even the mainstream press looks back on in, in 20 years at just how ridiculous that response was. Of course, the defense budget, an increased defense budget, is inconsistent with reducing emissions. Obviously it is, and I'll get some more data on that in a second here. But Pelosi also, uh, then she goes on and uh, says that climate crisis is a national security matter. Yes, yes it is, which is why you need to reduce emissions, which is all the more reason to not increase the military budget. Again, a lot of this just verbal diarrhea, they have no real response to this question because it's exactly on point. The only real response is to reduce the military budget. So let me get to a couple of studies here that have looked into this. First, I'll link to both of these below the video as well as the uh, uh, the conversation article that I'll, I'll reference in a second. But here, Brown University has a study on this, Pentagon Fuel Use, Climate Change, and the Cost of War. There's another one from, uh, this was uh, published in the Royal Geographical Society, Hidden Carbon Costs of Everywhere War. And the authors of this study went on to write this piece in the conversation saying, greenhouse gas emission accounting usually focuses on how much energy and fuel civilians use. But recent work, including our own, shows that the U.S. military is one of the largest polluters in history, consuming more liquid fuels and emitting more climate-changing gases than most medium-sized countries. If the U.S. military were a country, its fuel usage alone would make it the 47th largest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world, sitting between Peru and Portugal. Our study shows that action on climate change demands shuttering vast sections of the military machine. There are few activities on Earth as environmentally catastrophic as waging war. Significant reduction to the Pentagon's budget and shrinking its capacity to wage war would cause a huge drop in demand from the biggest consumer of liquid fuels in the world. It does no good tinkering around the edges of the war machine's environmental impact. The money spent procuring and distributing fuel across the U.S. empire could instead be spent as a peace dividend, helping to fund a Green New Deal in whatever form it may take. There are no shortage of policy priorities that could use a funding bump. Any of these options would be better than fueling one of the largest military forces in history. So I like here how they even go on to discuss where that money could be going. They could be, the U.S. empire, instead of waging war across the world, could be using that money to fund Green New Deals all across the world, reducing emissions, moving to, renew, uh, to uh, renewable energies. But instead, it's all about the constant uh, waging of war, which, of course, has a massive impact on the climate crisis, sitting between Portugal and Peru, if it were a country alone, it, it, the military alone. So absolutely insane how much... How much fossil fuel use uh, the military engages in and, and that they are not a part of that conversation when it comes to reducing emissions. Just ridiculous. But it's great to see this question get asked. Um, and again, all the credit in the world here to Adam Martin and the, the Empire Files. I'll link to their page below the video. They do incredible work. Check them out.